I'm Linda of Windy Oaks, and I'm so glad you've joined me today. We're going to be talking about one of my all-time favorite things in the whole wide world, which is spinning. And if you want to know how to spin without all the lumps and bumps in your yarn, this is the video for you. So keep watching, and I'm looking forward to having you as part of the flock. One of the most important things when it comes to spinning even yarn has nothing to do with your spinning technique. It has everything to do with your fiber preparation. I have in front of me several different kinds of fiber preparations. I have a bat that I carded on my drum carter. I have wool locks that have not yet been processed. I have roving. This roving is actually just a little bit felted. I have a roll lag. I have hand combed top, I have hand combed locks, and I have commercial top. The preparation types that you want to stick to if you are looking for a very smooth yarn, I would not suggest bats, at least at first. Bats are great, but they're usually carded, and, and carding does tend to fluff up the fiber more. It allows neps and noils more often, especially if you have a very tender or breakable fiber. It's a wonderful preparation, but I wouldn't recommend it for the beginning spinner trying to get smooth yarn. For the same reason, I would not suggest a roll lag. A roll lag is basically a rolled up bat. Now that's a very big oversimplification, but we'll talk about that in later videos. And what you're doing is the fiber is wrapped this way and you're pulling it this way. So it's automatically going to cause the fibers to stick out in different angles because of how it's being spun. I definitely don't recommend spinning from the lock if you are looking for a smooth yarn. This is a wonderful technique if you want a, a bumpy textured yarn. Now you can, if you want to spin from the lock, try hand combed locks. The nice thing about hand comb locks is that they're combed. All the fiber is going to be going in the same direction. It can really make a lovely, fine, smooth yarn. Roving can be a very good choice. This particular roving I actually picked because it's slightly felted. This would not be one that I would choose if I was trying to get a very smooth yarn. I actually use this fiber for felting cat toys. You can see when I pull it open that it is not very even, that there are bumps in it. As you pull this to spin it, see right there there's a nep. As you pull this to spin it, you're going to get different thicknesses. Many rovings are excellent for spinning very smooth yarn. Don't get me wrong, roving is wonderful. Just you have to pick your roving correctly. This is hand combed top that I have pulled out off the cards. So, it, so it's longer just like roving or uh, commercial top would be. And this would be an excellent choice for a smooth but bouncy yarn. You can see how smooth that is. And last but not least, you have your commercial top. And this is what I would suggest you start with if you're really trying to get a smooth yarn. Now again, this is just if you're a beginner to getting smooth yarn. Once you have an idea of what you're doing and you can play around more, you can make smooth yarn out of almost anything. It's all in how you handle it and what you, what you do as you're spinning. When you're trying for consistent, even yarn, it's important to know the two main types of spinning. You have worsted, which is where all the fibers are going in the same direction, or you have woolen, where the fibers are going every which way. Woolen fiber preparation is usually done using cards. These are hand cards, there are drum carters, and then of course there are the big machines that mills use. Worsted preparation is usually done using combs, and you can see that these look like pretty dangerous medieval weapons or some such. While it is absolutely possible to spin an even yarn using a woolen preparation, worsted is going to give you your best chance, especially if you're new at spinning yarn. What you want is a smooth, easy draw of the fibers. When you are doing your drafting, when you are spinning your yarn, you want the fiber to easily slide against itself. And what this will do is as you are spinning, 
the fibers will all go in the same direction and they will not stick out at every little turn. Now how smooth your yarn is, whether you are spinning worsted or woolen preparation, partly depends on what your fiber is. A lot of what I have on the table is Shetland, which is a very bouncy, crimpy fiber that has a halo after it's washed. That means that the ends of the fiber tend to fuzz a little and it's very soft and squishy and lovely, but it is not smooth like silk. Some of the fibers you might want to consider if you want a very smooth yarn are alpaca, bamboo, silk, and some of the long wool breeds. And while this fiber is a very bouncy one, I believe this is Tunis. It's from my friend Sandy's flock at Painted Hand Farm. Now that we're sitting at the spinning wheel, this is commercially prepared top, and we're going to start by spinning it. So I've already got a leader on my wheel, and I'm just going to connect the two by starting to spin and getting some twist into the yarn that's already here. And I'm going to let that twist catch the fibers right here. So you can see it just goes on. Now I don't care that this is a lumpy beginning because this is just for demonstration purposes. Please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a tutorial on how to join your fiber so that it doesn't create a little lump. I'm going to be doing a short forward draw. What that means is I'm going to pinch, draft, slide. So I'm pinching the yarn to keep all the twist on this side. You can see this is light and fluffy. This is twisty. And I'm controlling when the twist is allowed into my fiber source. So I pinch, I draft, I pull back as much fiber as I want, and then I slide my finger. Pinch, draft, slide. Pinch, draft, slide. And when I first started spinning, I said that to myself over and over as I spun. Pinch, draft, slide. Pinch, draft, slide. Now you'll see that I am putting quite a bit of twist into this. You can see how it pigtails on itself as I release the tension on it. You can control how much twist is here, not just in your whorls, but also by how fast you move your hands and how fast you treadle your feet. In this case, I'm keeping up a fairly slow treadle and I'm going to move my hands a little bit more quickly. Oh, you can see I got a little slub there. Now you're never going to have 100% even yarn. That's one of the things about hand spun yarn is that there's always going to be variation. You're not a machine and that's one of the joys of hand spun. But if you do get a little slub, what you can do is you can just sort of pinch your slub and you're going to pull it towards your wheel. You don't want to pull it back to you, towards you because it'll start pulling all the fibers into a lump and it'll make it worse. But if you pull it away from you, it can help with that. One of the other things you can do if you realize that you've let in more fiber than you wanted or you are about to have a nepper noil is catch the fiber before much twist has gotten into it. Pinch it ahead of where your problem is and you can actually unspin that little section there and redraft to get your yarn smooth where you were about to have a bump. It's very much about being heads up in what you're doing. All right, so I'm going to go back to spinning and I'm pinch, draft, slide. One of the things you can do is keep an eye on your fiber source. If you are going through your fiber source and you see a nep or a piece of VM, vegetable ma matter like hay or straw, stop spinning, pull it out, and then continue spinning. Because trust me, nothing makes a lump quite like a piece of VM, and it just drives me up a wall when I find it. To have smooth, consistent yarn, you don't have to be spinning thin like this is. I'm going to just add in some more fiber to my draft, exact same technique, pinch, draft, slide and you can see I'll just pull some off of my bobbin here 
the difference between these two yarns. The only difference was this one had less fiber in my draft and that one had more fiber in my draft. Other things to think about that will help keep your yarn consistent in what you are spinning is your tension. Make sure that you are advancing your yarn guide or moving hooks if you have a spinning wheel with hooks because the take up on the bobbin is actually different depending on how thick or thin the section that it is winding onto. As your bobbin fills and it gets thicker, you may need to adjust your tension to make sure that the take up or how fast the yarn winds onto the bobbin is the same as it was when the bobbin was narrow. Normally I find I have to adjust just a little bit tighter to keep it winding on the same way. And the reason you want that is because your speed of winding on is part of what determines how much twist goes into your yarn. And if how much twist goes into your yarn varies over the course of your yarn, you're going to get very different yarn. Now let's do a quick plyback test. Plyback tests are another great way to keep yourself consistent. That way you can check your work as you're spinning to make sure that the yarn you are, are making is what you want. Another tool that is invaluable for keeping your yarn consistent is control cards. Control cards are a spinner's best friend if you want consistent yarn. I use mine constantly. There's also a printable one that you can have for yourself if you go to my website, the link is in the description, and sign up for my newsletter. There are several control cards out there that you can buy. I got some of these on Etsy, some of these I got at Fiber Festivals, and what they do essentially is they keep you on track. There are two different kinds of control card. The first one is WPI or wraps per inch. It gives you the width of the yarn that you are making. And in the spinner's notebook available on my website, I do have the calculations for how thick your singles should be depending on how many plies you're going to have to get the yarn weight that you want. And what you do is you hold the control card up against your yarn and make sure that it's the right width. So in this case, I'm doing about 16 WPI according to this card. According to this card, and they do vary just a little bit, but this card also puts us at 16 wraps per inch. That's a good sign that we're on track. The other kind of control card is an angle of twist card. And this is a little more tricky to use, I'll, I'll be honest. What you want to do is here's your yarn. And if you look really closely, you can see the wraps that your yarn is doing. Is you hold the yarn up against the angle of twist card and figure out where the twist on your yarn actually matches the twist on the card. Now in this case, it's about 45 degrees. Now I don't always mess with angle of twist. I have to be doing something pretty special to care about angle of twist, but it does affect the yarn you make. It affects how dense it is. It affects how consistent it is from one spot to another, because if you have a tighter twist in one part of your yarn than you have in the other, it won't look the same, especially once you ply it. It will affect how much fiber is included to get the same weight and how bouncy or not bouncy the yarn is. These are my best tips and tricks for spinning an even consistent yarn. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments. Hope to see you again and thanks for being part of the flock.